Hello and welcome to this first episode of Dime Scheduler Under 10 Minutes. Today I'll show you how you can plan service orders using Business Central and Dime Scheduler. This is a planning tool that provides a visual wrapper around ERP, CRM and other line of business systems that require some visual scheduling capabilities. It is a very flexible tool that allows you to plan anything and anyone. What I'll do today is provide a quick overview of how Business Central and Dime Scheduler can be used in order to plan uh, service orders. This is Dime Scheduler. And as you can see right off the bat, this screen is filled with data. There's lots of colors, lots of buttons. There's even a geographical map on screen. They're in essence all components that you can use and set up in your personal workspace to plan the way you want to plan. So you could decide to use the map, for example, to look for nearby resources to see who can be squeezed in for an extra job because they're close by. Perhaps you'll want to use the resource filters component to look for people with certain attributes like skills and zones or departments, and even consider using our pivot grid to see who is overbooked, who is underbooked, and then plan accordingly. I will get back to some of these components a bit later on, but typically the story starts in the component that we see at the top left corner of the screen called the open task list. This is a data grid that shows all the work that still needs to be scheduled. A task is simply a unit of work that needs to be completed. A task could refer then to anything that you have in place. Within the context of BC, we could be referring them as service orders, jobs, production orders, absences. You could be using your own custom tables or even go outside the scope of Business Central like the Dataverse or your CRM or line of business system that you have in place. In the end, tasks will show up as individual rows on this list and then you can through drag and drop plan them in into our uh, planning board which you can see in the middle of the screen and it's arguably the most important component of them all because that's where we'll do our planning obviously. On the left hand side of the component we see our resources and like a task a resource could be anything or anyone that you would like to plan. We could be talking about service technicians, vehicles, special equipment, meeting rooms, anything can be a resource and anything can be a task. That's how simple as it gets. On the right hand side of our component we see our timeline and then in the middle our schedule that we've produced earlier. So through drag and drop we'll be planning in open tasks to the planning board which we can only do when there is a back of a system in place because without it, there will be no tasks, there will be no resources and we wouldn't be able to do uh, much. So we'll need Business Central to provide the data which we'll do today using a simple uh, service order which I've already prepared earlier to expedite proceedings. So this is a standard instance of Business Central Cloud and then we can see an order that has been uh, filled up and almost good to go. So what we see here is just a normal order that with an address we have indicated the type of order and then indicated a service item that needs to be uh, serviced. As soon as you install the extension for Dime Scheduler in Business Central, that will add buttons across Business Central to connect the tables to the planning tool. In this case, we'll have to go to the Actions menu in the ribbon, go to Dime Scheduler, uh, Submenu, and then we can send the order and we can then start looking for uh, the resource that can carry out this work. So upon invoking of this button, we will grab everything relevant for planning, like address information, like article number, and so on, and bundle it into one single line in our open task list. So we should see in a second, order 106 appear in our uh, list of open tasks. So when we go back to the tool, and navigate to the bottom, we'll see here nicely our order 106 appear at the bottom. And then as soon as your task appears in the list, it is completely the planner's call to decide what will happen next. If the planner already knows who's going to do it, all he'll need to do is drag the task and drop it on the planning board. 
And now we can continue the story in Business Central and finalize the order uh, there again. But oftentimes you may want to use more guidance and more help from a tool like a Diamond Scheduler to navigate and locate the right resource for the job. You may want to use the dimension of address information. If you have the address, you can simply click on your order. Then if there's a pin or you can pinpoint location, we will put a marker on the map and show where that order needs to take place. Then we can see which resources, the ones in the, the purple color pins, could show who can be uh, executed in that job. So let's see if we can calculate a trip for Richard Clarkson to see how far, how long it will take for him to get to the site. That will generate a trip. Then we can see it will take about 45 minutes to get to that site. And then purely based on the traffic time on the route and the location of our resource to assign him or not. So we can see for Richard Clarkson on the planning board, he is quite empty for the week. So we could consider assigning him to the job. It is not a mandatory step. There's nothing fixed. If you want to proceed and work that way, by all means, go ahead. If you don't want to do that, or if you want to have more information, more uh, like decision power, you could consider using our resource filters component, which you can see here, which is essentially a query filter builder. You can construct your own filters and then look for people that meet those uh, criteria. If you have the requirements of your task in Business Central, you can pass them along with the order, which will activate this button right here. When on, upon clicking of that button, we'll populate the requirements in the builder and execute that query against our list of resources. So we can see these three people are operating in this area and possess this particular skill. So this is a very quick way to see who is qualified and who will be actually successful at that uh, task at hand. But it's not, again, a mandatory step. If you want to ignore the suggestions, go ahead. It is not um, impossible. You can just ignore all the rules and override all the suggestions made by the tool. So for example, we could assign to Johnny here because you know he is the qualified person, he knows the customer, etc. cetera, uh, reasons like that. So in the end, all you will have to do is select your task, drag it onto the planning board, and drop it on the right date and time and resource. As soon as I drop it, you'll notice order 106 is no longer available in our open task list because that makes sense. It has been planned, so it's no longer an open task. It is a planned task. Secondly, as soon as you modify any kind of planning on this planning board, we will reach out to the original system that owns this record and update the record with the new planning information. So for each block that we produce on this planning board, we'll reach out and make sure there is an equivalent record in that system. For service orders, we have it still open in my browser here. We're going to create resource allocation lines. So within the order, we we'll can navigate to the allocation lines here at the bottom. And then we will see this record is the exact same record as the one we see on the planning boards. So this holds the same data as this block right here, even though this is a bit more visual than the allocation line in BC. If you think it is appropriate and useful, you could also decide to push the planning that you produce on this planning board to the people's outlook calendars. If you do that, you will see something like the following. I have sent in for Johnny. If I open up his calendar, we'll see right here, the new appointment 106 appears nicely in this person's Outlook calendar. For service management, we'll often see that customers will use other extensions in the marketplace, or perhaps even our own mobile app, which we see right here. I've signed in for Johnny. If I refresh my schedule right here, you'll see this appointment 106 appears nicely in this mobile app as well. It is an alternative that you may consider as an, uh, an additive to Outlook and something in the middle of those uh, ISVs extensions. So this was a very quick tour of Dime Scheduler and Business Central to plan service orders. There's obviously much more to it. If you want to learn more about it, I suggest you check out our website, dimescheduler.com, get a free demo and perhaps even get a free trial if you think it's worth investigating. I'll see you in the next episode.